Good evening everyone and welcome to my recording on how to use WordPress to create your own website for use in the education field. First and foremost let's take a look at WordPress.com. If you go to WordPress.com if you are a new user and don't already have an account right on the main screen you have the option to get started. So using any email address that you wish here we'll use a sample email address just to get us started. You can create a username and password no peeking and you will be given access to a free blog. Uh, please pay, note that uh, here at the end it should say wordpress.com and free afterwards. There is a drop down box that has many different options for you uh, but you'll notice that in gray that's much harder to see if you're not wearing your glasses like I'm currently not uh, there is a price associated with those um, ones that have .me, .com, .net, and .org suffixes so you want to make sure that you're choosing the wordpress.com free website uh, if you are considering upgrading and you wanted to get one of these other suffixes that might make it a little more direct of a route to your website uh, there's a list of different options that come with paying. Uh, you can choose to upgrade down below or you can just create your blog as we are going to do. Now you will get an email and you'll have to activate your account and you'll be given options uh, for setting up your account. But tonight I'm just going to go ahead and delve right into a website that I have been using WordPress to manufacture for a couple of years now. Um, this has been provided for me by my school district uh, so I didn't actually have to pay for any of those upfront costs uh, or any maintenance costs which is awesome. So let's take a look at Mr. Ledford's world history. Um, with this website you can create any number of different pages uh, that you can put on a number of different links. If you look here this is my home page. I uh, got a fun picture of the city of New York in the background uh, which you can't really see at the moment, um, but when you scroll all the way down on the longer pages you can see it. Uh, my students took that with me when we went on our trip to New York last year. Here I use this area uh, to post any instructional calendars that uh, I might have for my classroom and any upcoming events or any tidbits of news that they might need. I recently started a lunch and movie opportunity with my AP students and uh, posted the information on here for them to find. You also know uh, that you can use RSS feeds. Um, you can post that as an added widget onto your page. RSS is really simple syndication. Uh, it allows news stories to come directly onto your web page. So if your students, such as my world history students, need to find a current event, they know that they can always just come on here when they're checking their homework uh, and click to open a new tab. And it'll take them right to a news story. So let's take a closer look at the website itself. Um, I'm currently teaching two different history courses. One is an AP European history course and the other one is a regular and honors world history course. So you note that along the top the different pages are split up into those groups. Uh, one of my favorite features about this website is that uh, it allows me to save a lot of time and a lot of uh, our allotted copies uh, by not giving my students everything. The, vast majority of my students have access to the internet. It's not a super rich socioeconomic group, however I'm finding that many students choose to uh, forego the new sneakers in exchange for the new iPad or iPhone. Um, so they always have access to this. Um, I have been noticing recently, and you might come across this if you check out WordPress, that WordPress websites don't always show up very well on mobile devices. Uh, I was very surprised to see this. I have a brand new iPhone 5 which I'm super stoked about and it just it won't show up as well. Uh, the graphics are gone. I still have access to all the content uh, but the graphics are much simpler uh, and the backgrounds are all gone. So let's take a look at those assignments. For my AP students uh, they usually have a 
a fair number of writing and reading assignments that they have to do and I'm able to post the prompts up there and I'm also able to embed videos. One thing that I will show you here in a few minutes is that you don't want to necessarily just embed the videos uh, by uploading them into the database that they provide for you and then sticking them on the website. Instead it's so much easier and so much less space to just stream them uh, and embed a link from YouTube. Uh, in my history course, I often use videos taught by Mr. John Green. Hi, I'm John Green. This is Crash That's Course World History, and today we're going to talk about something that ought to be more controversial: the Renaissance. So you probably I agree. So more on that later. In addition to being able to post the assignment um, topics, uh, people are able to come on here and find links uh, to outside resources. Um, such as the primary sources, um, documents, down here I believe we have a virtual tour of the Louvre. Um, nope, must have uh, been taken down. Okay, but we have the Folger Shakespeare Library, we have audio readings, um, document bit databases, all sorts of fun stuff for when the kids are doing their research. Uh, and my AP students in particular love this next section, which are PowerPoints. Um, I'll show you how to get these up on here. Um, but any time I do a PowerPoint in class, um, I come on and I put a version of it onto the website. So all the student has to do is if they missed the PowerPoint on Christian humanism that day in class, they just need to click on it. And depending on their internet speed, it will open up very quickly or very slowly. Uh, thank you Verizon Fios for how humiliatingly slow that was. So um, I currently have them put on here as PDFs so they are able to see everything that would be on the PowerPoint slide. Uh, they can scroll through it but it does not have the um, the animations that you got that you might want to put into a PowerPoint to make it more lively. Uh, I also am a fan of embedding videos into the PowerPoints and those won't show up on here. Uh, it'll be a still frame um, of the beginning of the video but it will not play. Um, here we have a clip from uh, the show The Tudors in which uh, Thomas More, well I'm not going to give it away, but he goes on trial. Is you can see down here, the students then have options. They can uh, zoom in, they can zoom out, they can annotate it using Adobe Reader, they can save, they can print. Uh, it, I have a student right now who is having uh, a number of health issues uh, that prevent him from being able to be there in the classroom with us, but he is always able to, he's doing the readings at home and he is using the PowerPoints to, um, to be caught up. So let's head back to our website real quick. And before we get started in showing you how this works behind the scenes, take a look at one more thing. Uh, on this website, I have integrated a more social media aspect to it um, in which all my students are able to come here and they are able to contact me pretty close to any time uh, that they need me. Um, my Twitter feed is up here, my Facebook, uh, my teacher Facebook page was drastically different from my personal one, uh, is up here, my blog on uh, instructional technology, Pinterest, yada, yada, yada. So anything that my students would ever need to know at the drop of a hat, um, they can come here to find. Um, they also know that if I don't happen to provide them with the answer, they can go back to that resources page. And if they cannot find any document or article on here that addresses their issue in history, uh, well, then they need to go into the field for themselves. So let's take a look at how this works. First, if you are logged into your WordPress website, you're going to look for the dashboard. And the dashboard is where you're going to control pretty much everything. Along here on the left, uh, is a number of different links that allow you to uh, to navigate throughout the dashboard. Uh, as you saw on that first screen, I can update my students by sending them uh, or by putting posts onto the to the front page there, the home page when they get there. 
Uh, so all you have to do in order to do that is hit Add New. And I'll ask you for a topic. Hello, students. And then you can just add in your subject. Hey, guys. You're on camera. Say hello. Now you'll notice over here on the right hand side that there are these two tabs and one says visual and the other says HTML. Now if you do have a basic understanding of HTML um, this is going to be not a big problem at all for you especially since a lot of the uh, commands for HTML are up on top uh, so if you already know how to uh, insert things you know what it's supposed to look like then you're not going to have a problem. Uh, for those of you that aren't nearly as tech savvy as they say, if you want to just click on the visual tab, it gives you all of your more traditional buttons that still perform the same actions, but in a more visual way. You'll notice up here that you're able to embed a lot of things. Over here I, sh I told you that I like to embed videos from YouTube very simple process all you have to do is click on the YouTube button and it will give you a embedded video from YouTube window so you just copy and paste I don't actually remember what this video is it's probably a John Green video and your video will be here um, for your viewing pleasure now if you come over here to the big blue button that says publish all you have to do is click on that and though you won't see it the website has already been updated so let's add something else in there take a look at what we can do you'll notice that it's automatically adding in spaces which is very annoying which is why I usually have it in HTML mode because it does not do that but take a look at this icon uh, right up here up next to upload insert it says add media it's a little camera with uh, the notes next to it <clears throat> so if you click on this it brings you to what is called your media library you can upload any sort of media files from your computer uh, you just have to hit select files and then you can view um, let's put the syllabus on there open It gives you the option to change the title of it, to give it a caption and a description. You can link to an exterior URL and you can insert it into your post. One cool feature about this is that uh, if you are having to upload something that you have loaded before, you can always go to your media library, which will show you the things that you have uploaded recently. And if you hit show, it will give you the different details and you can choose to insert it into the post once again. And then again, you just hit update and it should get posted onto your website. Now, real quick, if you want to take a look over here again, um, you have the option to view multiple pages. Um, here we see a more expanded version of what was on our home page. And from here, you can access any of the pages that you have on your website. All right, so this has been a basic overview of a WordPress website using Camtasia Recording Studio device software. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it, and I hope that you enjoy the activity. Have a wonderful evening.